Antoinette Stevens, and I am a senior security engineer. I'm so excited to be here at KringoCon to give you my talk, Finding Rudolph, Why You Should Use IAC in the Cloud. For those of you who might not know, IAC stands for Infrastructure as Code. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about why I think IAC is important for your security posture. So what does it mean when I say normal? It's one of the major challenges of detection and response, finding what our normal is. We want to know what normal or average behavior looks like so that it's easier to write detection rules for the anomalies and outliers. Having a solid sense of normal means that we have fewer false positives and more value and confidence in our alerts. When it comes to the cloud, we can create a sense of normal through policy and configuration uniformity. We probably all know the story of Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, and like Rudolph, we want to create an environment where any deviation from the normal is immediately obvious and easily identified. For this talk, I'm going to focus mainly on AWS and Terraform. I'll let you read the official description, but if you've never heard of it, you can think of AWS as a collection of services hosted in the cloud. The services we'll be focusing on for our example are listed here, but AWS has many more. Terraform is an infrastructure as code platform owned by HashiCorp. It is fairly platform agnostic and can support many different types of platforms and technology. To demonstrate the usefulness of Terraform, I will be walking you through an example which builds infrastructure in AWS to implement the metric filter and alarms found in the CIS AWS Foundations benchmark. Metric filters define the terms and patterns to look for in log data as it is sent to CloudWatch logs. The alarms are used to create alerts for matches of the patterns defined in the metric filter. There are 14 metric filters and alarms that CIS recommends. Building these out by hand can be time consuming and tedious. Terraform would allow us to define all of the infrastructure we need once and reuse parts of the configuration to create the metric filters and alarms needed. Before continuing, there are some basic concepts about Terraform that I'd like to explain. Terraform code is written in the HashiCorp configuration language and is stored in files with the .tf extension. You can use a single .tf file for your configuration, or you can create many files and organize them into modules. Modules are very useful for more complex configurations and allow us to reuse bits of code and make it easier to organize our code and understand the configuration. From this folder structure, you can already see which AWS services I'm using. From a general programming perspective, you can think of modules as being similar to functions. They are reusable blocks of code that can accept variables and return outputs as seen in the variables.tf and outputs.tf files. Every Terraform module starts with main.tf, which is where resources are defined by default. Here's an example of the main.tf file for this module. As I mentioned before, Terraform can work with many different platforms called providers. For our example, we'll be using the AWS provider and specifying the US-East-1 region. You'll also notice I've defined a variable called common underscore tags. These are a key value mapping that will be used to set tagging on AWS resources. Within this block, you'll notice that I'm using var.team and var.contact, which are variables defined by the module. I've defined a submodule named CloudTrail, specified where the code for this module can be found, and passed common underscore tags as the value for a variable defined by the CloudTrail submodule called tags. Below, I've defined another submodule called metric underscore alarm underscore three underscore one, which uses the CloudWatch module code and passes more variables defined by the CloudWatch module. Tags, CloudTrail underscore CloudWatch underscore group underscore name, pattern, and metric underscore name. Whew. Okay, all of that was a lot. So if you're feeling a little confused right now, don't worry. The main thing I wanna convey is that we can create 
variables and return outputs from modules, and we can define many modules using a single source, making it reusable. The module I've defined so far only implements one of the metric filters and alarms needed. But to create more, you only need to copy and paste the block and switch out the name of the module, the metric name, and the pattern. The source, tags, and CloudWatch group name variables all stay the same. Here's what it looks like when I'm ready to see what infrastructure will be built in AWS. Running Terraform init will initialize all of the modules and plugins that I need for my Terraform project. Running Terraform plan will tell me what resources Terraform will create and how they will be configured without making any changes to my AWS environment. Here, I'm asked to provide values for the variables I've defined for this module. After Terraform plan runs, it will output information about what will be built in AWS. And you'll notice that the variables I specified earlier are being used in the tags. As I scroll up, Feel free to pause the video to take a closer look at the configurations. You'll see that some of the values can only be known after we run Terraform Apply, but you'll also see that we have a lot of flexibility in how resources are defined. After running Terraform Apply, I can go over to AWS and take a look at the changes that have been made. Here, you'll see that I've enabled CloudTrail and have all the configurations that I specified from my Terraform configurations right here including the tags. I unfortunately don't have the time to go through and show you all of the resources that I created through Terraform for this project. However, I do wanna make sure that you see the CloudWatch configurations that were set up. You'll see that the logs are streaming in from CloudTrail. You'll see that the tags have been created and also the metric filters are present. And you'll also see that the metric alarm has been created as well. From here, you can set up alerts that are triggered from the alarm using SNS, or you can also trigger a Lambda function to take some action for you based on that alarm. And there you have it. Writing that whole module took me about an hour. That's after months and months of struggling with Terraform. So if it takes you a little longer, don't feel self-conscious at all. It was a steep learning curve for me personally. So I really encourage you to take the time to read the documentation on the Terraform website and also pick up a really useful book that I found called Terraform Up and Running. I really enjoyed this book because I felt like it laid out from beginning to end exactly how to set up a Terraform project and write modules. It also had really cool tips and tricks about how you can do things like looping and how you can do more with the mapping function for those key value pairs. I really enjoyed this book. I think you should pick it up. I think it'll really level up your Terraform abilities. Just to slightly correct myself, I mentioned that I found this book. It was actually recommended to me by another engineer that I really respect. It's always good to surround yourself with people who know how to find the resources that can help others. Now that we've done a little bit of an overview about Terraform, and I mean overview, there is so much that I didn't get to cover. I didn't dive very deep into a lot of things. We just don't have the time for it. But now I get to make my pitch to you about why I think you should be using infrastructure as code for your cloud environments. The first one is policy enforcement. If you're a company would like to enforce a policy, for example, around the configuration of S3 buckets, Using Terraform, you can create a module that defines all of those configurations and have your users use that module whenever they're creating an S3 bucket. You can easily do things like specify encryption on the bucket. You can specify the lifecycle configurations. It's really useful if you know that there is a baseline that you need to have for different resources in AWS. Next is version control and change management. Using a centralized repository and a remote backend, which you should look up on Terraform's website what a remote backend is, you can control what resources get spun up and what kinds of changes are made to the configuration through pull requests and merge requests. Since changes made by your Terraform user are expected, you can create alerts on changes made by any other user in a production environment. 
Through CICD automation, you can use the CICD pipeline and ensure that your configuration and resources that you defined in your Terraform module are consistent with what's in your AWS environment, right? Through CICD, we can create an immutable AWS environment through the use of Terraform. With all of these three concepts combined, we can create a sense of normal in our cloud environment so that anything that wasn't made by our Terraform user, any resources that get spun up that weren't defined in our Terraform configuration, anything like that, we can alert on it and it's immediately a higher fidelity alert. So please don't underestimate the value of normal. Now you're probably thinking to yourself, what are the downsides? And I wanna be honest with you about what that is. The first one I wanna mention is that a lot of us can be a little lazy with the IAM permissions that we give to our Terraform user. Some people will just grant it immediate admin access. If that's what you're going to do, no judgment from me, okay? Do what you have to do, but make sure that the credentials for that user are safe. Otherwise, if you have the time and the mental capacity, feel free to give it the specific access that it needs to run the configurations. Now, if you're using the same Terraform user for a very large configuration, say you have a centralized enterprise-wide Terraform repository, that's probably not gonna be possible and it's probably gonna be terribly tedious. So using the admin role in AWS is probably the easiest and best way to go. Just make sure that those credentials are safe. Another downfall is that not every resource is thoroughly defined in the Terraform AWS provider. And so sometimes you'll run into situations where you want to build out a resource in Terraform and it might not be fully implemented or even available. In those cases, you might either have to build it manually or just use the AWS CLI. In these cases, it's best to discuss with your team the best direction to go and make sure that if you do have detections in place to identify manual actions, there's some type of allow list that will not alert on that behavior. As we all know, there's no silver bullet in security. My approach is just one of many that you can add to your cloud security posture. I believe that this approach works best for high value accounts, anything that is storing very sensitive information, your customer information, any account or environment that should not change often. I believe this approach works really well. If you have test or experiment accounts, this might not be the best approach. Take what you learned here and apply it in the best way you see fit for your environment. Thank you so much for listening to my pitch for why you should use IAC in your cloud environment. This has been Finding Rudolph. I hope that uh, this was informational for you. I hope that maybe you learned something new. If you did, let me know, drop me a line. You can find me on Twitter and Mastodon. My handles are on the screen.